Granville here, just coming at you live from uh, Melbourne. Uh, we're here, we're traveling around at the moment, have a bit of a stopover in, the, in Australia before we're heading off to the UK and Europe. So I thought I'd do a quick lesson and to talk to you about Lydian Dominant. Now this is a great scale to use and a good sound and it's something that, you know, kind of can make it playing a little more hip um, quite easily. So what is it? Well, it's a Mixolydian scale. So if we're in the key of A, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G and A. Right? Mixolydian, A mixolydian, but we raise the fourth, so we have a sharpened fourth, so A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G to A. So it's that sharp 11 in it. It's a really cool sound, so it's more of a jazz kind of tonality, but you can use it in progressive rock or uh, sometimes you use it on the blues or all kinds of stuff, fusion stuff especially, it's really great. So, uh, what is it? Well, it's a derivative of the um, jazz minor scale or the mix, uh, some people like to call that the melodic minor scale. It's not really the melodic minor scale, it's the jazz minor scale. But anyway, so position one would be this. <laughs> Now there's two ways of kind of looking at this, two ways I like to look at it. The first one is I look at it as being an A. So and it kind of fits over this chord. Alright, so that's A, G, C sharp, B sharp, or A7 sharp 11. And it fits with that tonality. Alright, so I like to think of it as though it's an A, and then all my shapes are related to that. Right? But I also like to think of it in another way, and that's thinking of it as being its derivative, which is E jazz minor. So A Lydian dominant is the same set of notes as E jazz minor. By jazz minor, I mean the melodic minor ascending. too quickly over this just go back and rewind the video and watch those parts over and over again until you get it um, it'll say for those that already know this stuff having to go over it repeatedly so anyway the advantage of thinking about it is E jazz minor over A is that you start thinking differently about it like you might think for example there I played E minor major 7 if I put that over an A you get a sound that 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 is Lydian dominant derived, but it's a different perspective. For example, here's another E minor major seven voicing. All right, and I'll put that over an A. All right, another one. All right. The James Bond chord, right? That's E minor major 9, it's got a 9 in it, an F sharp, but I put that over an A, and I get A13 sharp 11, so it's getting all those colour tones that are Lydian dominant. So having those two perspectives, being able to learn how it works as, as an A sound, and also as an E jazz minor, but over an A. Right, so and there's two kind of ways I use the scale when I use it in terms of my playing. Uh, two places I tend to use it. Um, this is an interesting one because a lot of people get confused about dominant chords. They think, you know, a dominant chord means, you know, every dominant chord is treated the same, but they're not. 
the, the key thing to dominant chords is to consider where they're going. Is it a five chord going home or is it not a five chord going home? That's the, the big question. So if we look at a tune like Take the A Train, which the first chord is C major seven. Right? And then the second chord is D seven. In this case I'm playing D nine, but it's all the same, it's D seven. It's the fam family that it's coming from. D seven implies we're going to G major, doesn't it? If it was a five chord. But it doesn't do that, it goes D minor. So therefore that's a dominant chord that's not going home. It's not a five chord, so we're... And there it went to D minor instead. And then the G7 back to C. So that is the perfect place to use Lydian dominant. And actually if you look at the tune, take the A train, it's actually included in it. sharp 5, uh, sorry, the flat and 5 or the sharp 11. And in that case, I could think of it as D mixolydian, uh, sorry, D lydian dominant. Or I could also think of it as A jazz minor. cool way of getting to something quite easily because we know the jazz minor shapes so therefore it's just a matter of you having a different perspective you're treating it like a true mode so that's one place I'll use it is over like dominant chords that don't go home another example is the girl from Ipanema which is F major 7 to G7 So it's that same thing, the two chord of the song is a dominant that goes to a minor. Well, dominant that doesn't go home, well that's where we use Lydian dominant as our preferred choice. In terms of what sounds most correct. Now sometimes you don't want to sound correct, you want to do stuff that kind of breaks the rules. But my feeling on it is if you don't know the rules, don't break them. Until you know it, then, then you can break them with some kind of conviction and some kind of purpose instead of just random. Right, so one of the, the rules is that Dominant chords that don't go home, that's a great place to start with Lydian dominant. Great, another way I like to use them too is over one chord vamp. So if it's like a funk tune that's like a D7 thing or a C7 thing, whatever chord, but say it's just sitting on one chord for a while, maybe something like. Might be one of those grooves. Well, a lot of times people will use pentatonic and that's great. But what if you put in some Lydian dominant in with that? So I'll, I'll start with pentatonic and then I'll play Lydian dominant. Here we go. colorful a little more angular um, and what I like about that is it just it gives you another option of another color it's kind of like if you were going to paint a painting and you only had one shade of blue well that's great everyone likes blue but what about if you're going to paint with a bunch of different shades well now you can tell a story and that's what we use these for is to how to tell a story um, so yeah I'd use it over those one chord kind of funky groove type things um, and then of course there are other places you can use it as well, tritone subs and stuff like that, but we'll get to that another time. But anyway, that's kind of the basics of Lydian Dominant. Uh, it's an often misunderstood scale and a really useful sound. Now of course with any scale you can derive chords from it. Um, there would be one, like if we're in the key of A that I was in before, you'd have an A7 and then your next chord would be B7, right, instead of B minor which would typically exist uh, and then you'd have a C sharp type of chord, a D sharp type of chord and so on and so on through the different chords that would stack out of it. Uh, we'll get into that another day. Anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions post them in the comments below. Uh, remember to like this video and subscribe and if you like my stuff then you know share it around, you know, uh, share the love so to speak. So to speak. 
anyway um, we're off to Perth next week uh, I'll try and do another video from out in Perth if I can and try and do some stuff outdoors too try and get out and uh, play uh, guitar on a beach or whatever because it's Australia and it's 32 degrees out there today 32 C by the way I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit for those that do deal with that but um, anyway we'll be in Perth next and then we fly to London and so when I'm in London it's gonna be cold I'd imagine anyway uh, get in touch and uh, look me up on Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm going to play out. Thanks.